Hi, and welcome to another episode of my podcast, Who's Zooming Who? And as well as being the third episode of the second season, um, it's also the second episode that I get to speak with. Um, Some would say (laughs) my my doppelganger. Others would say um, a slightly older and less good-looking version of me. Um, and um, some would say my brother from another mother, uh, the one and only, the indomitable Mr. Tom Farley um, from Munster Technological University, hyphen Tralee. Tom, you're very welcome. Um, are, are we friends or are you my nemesis, Ken? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, Tom, with you, I'm not sure that there is a difference. Um, <laughs> I, I think you can go from one to the other in the course of, I was going to say over the course of a day, it's probably actually over the course of a conversation. Um, but look, we won't, uh, we'll, we'll leave that. We, we, that, that. That'll be an ecumenical matter. Uh, Absolutely. As they say. Um, anyway, Tom, it's great to have you back. You were here for the first one, and this, I think, if I have counted things up right, is episode 17, so um, there's been 16, um, or 15 in the meantime, but actually 16 guests, because I did have uh, one episode with, uh, two, two, with two guests. So, last year when we first spoke, we spoke about Gas to Ghost Global, and uh, I've given you a whole year now to get familiar with who your speakers are, because um, <laughs> you, you, you were slightly surprised by that question last year, even though that's what we were said we were going to talk about, um, but we're doing it again. Gas to Ghost Global 2, why, why then and why now? Um, why then, why now? Good question. Um, well, first of all, uh, all seven of the speakers have very, very graciously uh, agreed to, to come back on board. So I think that's the, the first thing. I mean, they, uh, I could have all the ideas that I would plan to, but I mean, if we're out somebody. Um, and in fairness, one of the reasons is you were chibbying me along as well, Ken. I might add, I might add. But no, I mean, joking aside, I think the seven people have agreed to come back. Um, to be quite honest as well, I can't believe... Um, that we're still in, in, in lockdown. And at, at least for the foreseeable future, it, it does appear to be a lockdown. So I suppose when, when we done it last year, it was a way of sort of bringing people together and maybe <clears throat> thinking about what has happened and what's going forward. Um, now, I think we have the benefit, if I, use, if I dare use the word benefit, uh, certainly hindsight of a year down the road. I, and, and just from talking to all my friends in the EdTech community, um, I mean, to say that EdTech has moved exponentially doesn't even begin to come into it. So I suppose it gave us an opportunity. I mean, last year was about like looking forward. But now we're, I think we're going to be looking forward in one way. Uh, but we're looking forward with the benefit of a year's hindsight. And I think, uh, and I think also, look, I, I've seen some stuff there. I mean, I've been at the, the you know, the ALT conference and, and, and the ILTA conference and, I have to say, there's a real, well, unless I'm reading it wrong, there's a real sense of, of coming together and, and enjoying, um, you know, th- that fellowship, if, if you will. So I think something which taps into that, um, I think, isn't going to tax us too much. It's going to be just over an hour, an hour and a half uh, long. So it's not asking someone to give up a whole a whole day. Um, I think that's one of the other things. So. Yeah, uh, reflect, look forward to, but I, I know I'm saying the same thing again, but it's a different type of looking forward. It's a more informed looking forward than like last year. Um, I don't know what we imagined, but I don't think any of us imagined a year later we'd still be in, in this situation. Uh, absolutely. And I think um, based on the, the conversation, I think that you and I had this time or around about this time last year, we were wondering what September was going to look like. Um the thing is, what we didn't reckon with was what September were we actually talking about? We were actually talking about last September, but those those conversations probably apply to uh, just, just as easily could apply to next September now. So Gas to Goes Global 2, the date is going to be the 13th of April. Uh, it's a Tuesday, 6.30. Yeah, uh, 6.30 till 8, uh, Irish Standard Time. Um, I'm brutal for walking out what <laughs> the different variations. 
but we will have a sort of time converted there like that. Well, the, yeah, clocks think, are, the clocks are going forward between now and the then. The clocks so. are going forward now and then, so we'd have to, yeah, just think about that a little. Um, no, I think um, we, we we did sort of pull out you know, myself, yourself, and Gerardo Sulawan in, in Cork, and my now colleague in MTU. Um, but I think it gave us a chance to reflect um, on, on what the lessons we learned. And I think we, even with the best will in the world, we realized the error was just a, a tad ambitious, even keeping everybody to, 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 to task on time. Little bit of, you know, sort of, some of them were getting a bit cuter and actually finish on time. Um, so as a, well, like, well no, Tom, we, I, I think the feedback from last year was everybody was on time except you. So um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you were the only one that went over five minutes and, and you weren't even one of the speakers. Speakers, no. Uh, um, there, there was, uh, I suppose, uh, t- t- the, the, the erstwhile Tony Bates did, as, as the final speaker, I think it was probably marginally over, but... Um, oh, I think you've been, yeah, you've been uh, nice and marginally. Uh, at the time, I think you, you, you were almost too afraid to, um, to, 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 to bring down the, um, to, to bring down the, 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 the clanger. So you mentioned, um, myself and Garod, thanks very much for mentioning, for mentioning myself and Garod obviously was involved in last year, but we've got, you've got some additional uh, help this year as well. So maybe it might like to, um, let people know about some of the rest of the organizing committee, because I know you've tweeted about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is, it's great to have, have actually a, a proper walking committee. Now that sounds bad and a proper, we had a great, we had a great few people last year, but I think, um, it was all a little bit, you know, let's put the show on tonight last year. And, and I think it was all hands to the pump. Um, but I think this year, you know, we've had an, an opportunity to to expand and kind of think about some of the stuff that we'd like. So, I mean, some 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 great people there, uh, Arna uh, Farrell in Dublin City University and the works for the NIDL. And uh, I'll, I'll come back to, you know, a particular role that she'll, she'll be playing here. Uh, Marie O'Neill from CCT. Uh, and Emery, who knows Marie, uh, an absolute powerhouse, dynamo. Any word that you can think about in, in, in those sort of phraseologies, yeah, it, it, it's even then it doesn't do her justice. And uh, Sharon, on, or, sorry, Sharon Flynn, sorry, it's Sharon O'Neill. Uh, Sharon Flynn, who I look, I, I, I mean, at the risk of sounding, I'm giving a big shout out, but the OUA Diged has been an absolute stormer of a project last year. And I think. Um, about her own experience and uh, you know the the the, the OUA Diged project and the lessons there. So I just thought it was an invaluable sort of link. Uh, and I think it, it because we did realize that we probably were stretched a bit thin last year. Um, yeah, I, I was uh, tired of carrying you, Tom. I don't I just didn't like all of the work. <laughs> But, well, no. I did. I feel ba- I felt bad. You were in traction for three months after yeah, the yeah, 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 like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, luckily, yeah. luckily I'm so small. Yeah, you're, you're, you're hard to carry. You know what can I tell you? But luckily, I'm so skinny and so small. Yeah, the um, no, look, uh, and I couldn't agree with you more. And um, incidentally, all of the um, all of the organising committee um, have been guests here on the podcast. I don't think that was. I don't think that was. Um, Deliberate. So I don't think it was a requirement to be on the to be on the organising group, uh, but it, it, it is ironic um, that they all were. Uh, and yeah, the, the work that Sharon um, and the group um, and her group have done over the past year has just been nothing short of um, incredible. Um, yeah. And yeah. and um, anybody that I've had the opportunity to speak with about it or share. Um, some of the resources that have come out of there, um, I, I haven't been a bit shy of doing it. And actually, the, the the most amazing thing about actually that particular whole project is the amount of student um, centered and student led work that's coming out of it is is incredible. Um, and getting the feedback from them on this this past year. So thinking about this past year, um, and look, obviously. We have to be. Um, it's all well and good to to, to to laugh and joke, and that's the nature of, I suppose, how we you and I interact. But there is a serious reason behind all this, obviously. And um, you know, I don't think twelve months ago um, any of us would have perhaps envisaged the scale um, of what's happened since. And, and I don't think we should lose sight of that either. Um, and the the reason we're all we're, we're doing all this is to preserve and to to, to save life. And, and to save lives and, and keep people healthy. Um, 
looking back at, at the last year, what are the things that have probably surprised you in terms of what I didn't think that would happen or um, maybe surprised you in things that you expected to happen that didn't happen? Yeah. Um, I see a lot of stuff around the proctoring and, you know, without getting all sort of technical, but the, but the, 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 the SAMR model, uh, I think is very, resonates strongly with me. Um, and I think like when we're under pressure, there's a tendency to kind of do what we know or, or at least replicate as close to what we know as possible. So I suppose um, there was an initial sort of sense of we can't do real face-to-face -face exams. So how do we replicate those real face-to-face -face exams? <clears throat> um, but actually, relatively quickly, I think people were far more, uh, you know, about an individual level and institutional level, people were far more willing to engage with, with different ways of assessment rather than just saying, oh, <clears throat> how can we do the exam in, a, as I said, dare I say, a normal as way as possible. And I think the whole kickback with the proctoring thing has been very, very interesting to see. Um, so I think that, that was one of the, the, the really big things there that, that uh, I think there was far more inventiveness and far more willing to, to try different things than I, I might have otherwise expected, to be quite honest, which is so, uh, that, that was really good to me. There was an initial sense of how can we do it, but no, and I'm just talking to friends and colleagues around the country. I think that's been one of the big senses there excuse me and i see I, actually it's interesting to see like a lot of the conferences the edtech conferences now are kicking back about proctoring sponsorship so i think that 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 that's an interesting uh thing to see i would have to say overall my sense has been um one well sorry so the proctoring thing is one uh two i wish i had bought chairs in zoom um i, I you know it is i mean it's it's, it's gas which we're here on zoom now and um I think there was that sort of big push there. Um, and it was really funny because, I mean, you know, early, very early on, there was this whole sort of Zoom bombing uh, thing, which I felt was very, very unfair because um, <clears throat> that was just like people sort of sharing the link. But that that could be any link and you're sharing it. And uh, the analogy I've used uh, when I'm speaking to people is it's like buying, you know, five, you know, hold our keys, walking down to the pub if it was open and leaving the keys on the bar and then blaming Yale for being a bad luck. Um, you know, so I think that's, <clears throat> but initially that, that sort of got over the thing. And then I think people have got um, really, really well used to sort of interacting yeah. online. Bar, I, I, bar. I, I, I should probably declare now that when I decided to call this podcast, who's zooming, who zoom gave me a thousand shares. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. And I'm still um, waiting for that 50 shares that you promised me. For being, the first, yeah, you, yeah. for being the fourth, yeah, you for being the fourth zoom in Yeah, no, I don't, I, I know, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I wish, I wish, Tom. Yeah. Um, no, you're, you're, look, you're absolutely right. Um, and I do think that there was uh, a hesitancy, uh, even going back to the Gasta thing. I mean, I know yeah. the initial conversations that we had about uh, Gasta goes global one last year. There was a feel, can this be as good online? So, uh, even you and I, both of whom would be proponents of online education and very much early adopters in, in, in the digital world, were wondering, could it be the same? Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably go so far as to say it wasn't the same. I'm not saying it was the same and it was better. I'm not saying it was the same and it was worse. It wasn't the same. And I, I think we recognized that it wasn't the same, but it was a very good event. Um, equally as good as a on-campus, on-premises uh, event, but different um, by, by the same token, um, not least of which is, and, and I did see this written about actually only um, in the last couple of days. Um, if you try to run a GASTA event at a venue someplace and try to get the seven speakers you got, um, it, it just couldn't have happened. Um, uh, so, you know, let's recognize that there are some things and there are some advantages um, to, 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 to this mode of delivery. I think the, the thing that has probably surprised me the most, um, not least of which is how long this is going on, because um, I did think by now we'd be back to um, what we accepted as, as normality. Uh, but I think the thing that surprised me the most is how people 
for the most part, just got on with it um, and just kind of did whatever it was they could do um, in whatever way they could do it, um, either to, to reach out um, and help their students. Um, and then the flip side of that, from a student's point of view, how much they embraced that this isn't normal, but it's what we've got to do for now. Um, and let's make the most of it um, while we can. That's not to say that um, I want to sound too happy clappy and say that this is all sweetness and light and it's wonderful. Um, it's not. Um, but is it better than nothing? Absolutely. Is it as good as it can be? No, it's not. Um, but I do think it, it does give us a glimpse into some of the potential that's there for the future. Um, once the required, I suppose, investment um, and reimagineering of things um, is put into place. Um, you mentioned about um, proctoring of exams. It wasn't a road that we ever even looked to go down, I'll be honest. Um, it just was a conversation that was cut dead uh, pretty much from the get-go. Um, but you're right, um, it is very, very real. Um, I did have uh, an example here in this house because my youngest son was doing his insurance exams and the exam that he had was proctored. Um, and he said the sensation of being watched from the other side of the camera by somebody who could see him, but he couldn't see them um, was particularly strange. And when they asked to see up his sleeves, even though he was wearing a T-shirt, it was uh, even uh, stranger. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be um, a fan of the, the proctoring idea. I do think the answer probably lies in <sighs> we've we've kind of reimagined the delivery to a certain extent. Now we need to reimagine the assessment. It's a harder nut to crack. Um, that's, a, and, and and that's a good way of putting it, Ken. No, yeah. it is. It's, 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 yeah, the delivery was relatively straightforward. I think the reimagining assessment strategies um takes a bigger a bigger leap because I suppose if you're used to standing in front of a class and having your PowerPoints up here, well, what's really the difference in the sense of being online? You're still standing here and the PowerPoints here. So um, but the assessment strategy, if you have designed, you know, a, a standard exam, you know, what are the three factors of? List the three elements of, even if you know nothing about the topic, if I'm sitting here. And I think that's where, you know, about reimagining assessments, so maybe more, you know, problem-based learning, scenario, authentic assessments comes into, into play. And But you're right, I, I, I actually was surprised that, you know, the vast majority of places, you know, we're not trying to replicate exams. I think there was the odd time where maybe a professional body may have insisted on certain things and i get that but uh, you know that where they're, 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 they have more concerns and particularly this online learning is new online assessment is really really new so i i i i, I get that um so as i said I, but by and large and you're right i share that that thing like it's not about all being happy clappy um but i do think people had recognized that this is not a, a, a normal time and i think that uh, that was the thing, and and the, you know, for students, which as I said, it has really exposed. I mean, we we keep talking about you know, and I've heard it there, like you know, sort of the the, the pandemic has put a sort of you know the, an, an MRI on on teaching and learning, and certainly in this case, we've talked about a digital divide for a long time. I'm not saying it was always an abstract concept, for it really is a real concept now. Um, I mean, we we've spoken here, uh, you know, before, and and my my internet. Even at its best, I couldn't even begin to aspire to what you have. And, and I'm at the worst. I mean, I, I started off in September and I, the first thing I asked all my students to do was, was to run a, a speed test. And the best in my class had a 17.6 download and a 4.8 upload. And that was the best out of 28 students. Um, what do you expect, Tom? You're living in Kerry. <laughs> well, that, but I mean, you know, I was talking to people who were living in in in, in Clarny and Tralee, we weren't talking about people living. Well, I'm only by, by the way, just in case I offend anybody um, from the kingdom of Kerry, I, I love Kerry. Um, it's it, you know, um, I was joking, yeah. but no, I mean, but that's a bit, but the, the, the whole, the whole, you know, sort of 
side of west side of Ireland like that. But I mean, that's the thing there where I meet mean, I had people there who were sharing laptops with siblings and stuff. And, and these things are, are real. And I suppose, like, you know, uh, particularly I suppose, like, you know, I'd be supporting, like, you know, say students, nursing students, social care students, people who are maybe doing work placements as well, who are doing 12, 14 hour shifts in a social care environment and then have to worry about their lecture. I, I mean, it's just, uh, like, without sounding melodramatic, it really did sort of, you know, shine that light. The other side of it is, I suppose, certain things were, were just, you know, I, you know, you, you, I've heard this sort of said about, like, the rate of, of like, say, in World War II when, when, when necessity was the mother of invention, like, things are pushed through. I think the same thing has happened. Uh, and I know a lot of it has been classified as emergency remote teaching. But some of the stuff we have transcended through about three or four layers that because there wasn't time to discuss or agonize over certain stuff. And, you know, I think it's it's no, no, I, I think I think you're absolutely right. And um, a lot of the time expediency became the order of the day. So things were pushed through um, much quicker than they might otherwise have been the case. Um, in our own institution, um, we turned around and bought Zoom far quicker than we might have otherwise have been able to do. Um, and that was purely on the basis of the, the pushback we got from lectures was, this is the tool that we need um, to do the job that you want us to do. So um, it absolutely did sort of concentrate minds um, and allowed things to, to move relatively quickly. Um, and I suppose some of it was taking that, that adage of uh, the great is the enemy of the good. Um, if you can just get it done good, you can work on making it great. Um, and, and it's kind of like getting the, 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 the getting over that initial inertia to, to get things moving and get things happening. Um, in terms of the digital divide, you're absolutely right. Um, and look, I, I, I joke, I, I live in a city, um, albeit a very small one. Um, that's not trying to insult water for people, but, you know, let's be real. No, really? Uh, <laughs> I tell you, that sense of people who's training can is really that walk. And yeah, 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 yeah. But look, I just, I did not um, to, 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 to just insult Kerry. I might as well spread it around. But when you're from Cork, that that just comes natural. Um, but yeah, I live in a city. I've, fiber broadband or cable broadband, whatever it is, I think it's 300 megs um, most of the time. Um, I live in a house where, yes, my son is working from home, um, but we all have devices. We're not sharing devices. We're not, there's not strong contention on the line. Um, I don't have young children that I'm homeschooling, um, which is just as well because I, I wouldn't be much good to them if I, if I was. Um, I could barely school myself. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm very conscious of my pandemic experience isn't a universal one. Um, it's very unique um, to me. I, I, actually, can I just jump in there? I mean, that's one of the things, and I, I, I'm sure I've followed some of this stuff uh, about you know, and some some of our colleagues are, are across the country and around around the world as well are very concerned about, you know, the students are not turning on their cameras. And, uh, you know, I love what Mahabali has to say about it. I don't know what's going on, you know, with, with sharing what's in the in the room. I mean, video re requires more bandwidth. There's all sorts of stuff there. And, and, and so I've just seen people getting very obsessed about, you kind of go, is that really the, the, the major concern? Yes, I, I, I understand the thing about visual stimuli, but... You know, I don't know. It, it's it, it, no, it, it is very real. And um, look, the person I heard get most wound up, wound up about it was you, Tom. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think the, the, the thing about the, the cameras thing, and it is something that I've that I've had the conversation with several lectures about as well. And I think the thing we need to remember here is our undergraduate students certainly. This is not what they signed up for, right? No. This is not what they thought their college experience was going to be. Yeah. They expected it to be, um, you know, I, I remember it's a long time ago. 
Um, when I was a, a college student myself, after I'd done my leaving service. It was in black and white. It was it? in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> and when we went to school on horseback, Tom. Um, but I, I remember... Did you write on slate? <laughs> we did. Um, the, uh, and I actually went to, I went to the institution that you work for now. Um, uh, it was Cork RTC at that time. And, and somebody asked me what it was like. And I remember saying, yeah, sure, look, it's, it's kind of just like secondary school, only you don't wear a uniform and you can smoke. Um, and that was pretty much the way it was at the time. But that was the college experience. You went to a physical building, yeah. you sat in physical classrooms, um, and that's what you signed up for. Um, none of our students that are learning from home at the moment expected to be sitting in front of a camera for several hours a day. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, in many cases, in a very personal space, in their home, in their bedrooms, in shared space with the rest of their family. So I don't think, um, while, yeah, absolutely, it's nice to be able to see people's faces and it's nice to be able to see people smile um, and things like that. Uh, and as humans, that's how we connect. I don't think it's, I don't think we have the right to insist on that. Mm. Um, and I suppose that's that's where, where I keep coming back to is that you have to have that um, it's okay for people to say, this isn't for me. Um, I did read somewhere recently as well that some of it is to do what they're calling, what they're now terming as um, Zoom fatigue. Mm. Uh, and apparently Zoom fatigue is because as we are on this call, I'm looking at you, but I can also see myself. Um, we're not used to looking at ourselves as much as we are looking at ourselves now. And, and apparently we get tired of looking at ourselves. Now, I got tired of looking at myself about 10 years ago. Um, so I only, was probably, only 10. <laughs> yeah. I, you want to see me 10 years ago, Tom? I had a head of hair. So it was like, um, <laughs> so it was out here. Um, but, but anyway, uh, no, I, I, I'm only joking. The, the other thing I do think that, that uh, and I'm glad you mentioned um, that sort of uh, war spirit, for want of a better way of putting it, right? Um, there is a, a, a lot of talk around that this isn't as good as, that this is in some way inferior, that people aren't, um, there's, a, there's a, a loss of learning, that there's a learning deficit. And, and to be honest, I, I reject almost all of that, right? And, I, and I'm sure, look, and I'll, I'll let you in in a second, and I'm sure that, that you might have, have your own opinion on it as well. But I think before you can frame all of that loss talk and all of that deficit talk. Number one, you have to recognize that the, the amount of money that's been spent in totality across the sector on digital learning is tiny in comparison to the physical, to the money that's been spent on the physical campus. So we're not comparing like with like for a start. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's apples and oranges. It's, it's like buying a, a Fiat and expecting a Ferrari. Um, it's, 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 you're not making a fair comparison. The other thing that I don't think is particularly fair is that, right, okay, all of our students mightn't have, um, and, I, and I'm using this term kind of slightly loosely, they mightn't be reaching the learning outcomes of our modules as they were designed at the time the modules were designed. But look at all the new skills that they've picked up over the last 12 months that we never anticipated that that they would be able to pick up. And I think if we're to lose sight of that, I mean, you, you hear this kind of stack trotted out every once in a while that there's, we're, we're educating people for jobs that don't exist because, yeah. right? Like one of the things, and, and I think the, the underlying skill of our students and our skill of, of ourselves and the skill of the human race is our adaptability to adapt to things that happen to us. And if the last 12 months isn't an exercise in adaptability, then I don't know what it is. Um, but that's, look, that's just me having, having my rent. Um, oh, no, no, I, I think that's, and I, in, in some ways, like, you know, the, the gust of goes glow is just part of that, that general sort of opportunity to stop, pause and chat. I suppose, look, I, I mean, one of the things there, and I think it was a good idea that to, to come up with uh, the suggestions about, you know, that space i mean the the, the the proposal was like that we'll also you know a, a press book will come out of this 
and just want to acknowledge like uh, uh, Arna in DCU, Arna Farrell. Um, you know, it's the idea of sort of you know that we'll take it. So there'll be there'll be just the chapters from from the the seven presenters and 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 the six on the committee. But actually, also there will be a number of students involved because I think we're keen. Uh, you were mentioned there, but that different voice. And I think, I suppose, like, that's the one thing we're sort of saying with Costa Goes Global this year. It's just a little bit more of a of a sort of jumping off point, I think, that, you know, to, 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 to think and talk about that and, and just come together. Um, so I suppose that that's, and I mean, it's, it's interesting, like, in the last year, I've been asked to host a number of online Costa sessions, which, for something which, as you said, Ken, was, that was so really rooted in the physical space, and we, you know, we thought, could we do it? Uh, it's different, yes. Is it better or worse? It's certainly very good in coming together. And actually, just uh, just sort of have me think in the background. I really want to give a shout out to to Marin Deepwell uh, in Alt and and uh, Brian Matters for what you see over my shoulder here. Uh, the I've been gas to be sort of toying around, throwing around the idea of a number of years of having a badge, like you know, sort of that that idea of. Uh, I've been gusted and I think just want to give a shout out to, to I mean I've been talking about it but Marin Deepwell uh, really just gave the impetus to it and, and, and harness Brian Matters Brian incredibly talented guy uh, I, I, I know you've had him recently down in Waterford and anybody who, who sees the, the illustrations say he's he, he's done uh, my friend Eamon Costello in DCU also had a great paper out last year and done some stuff so anybody this add on there's no product placement here uh but for uh, but for, <laughs> no but joking aside for brian matters I, I think honestly the guy is supremely talented and really captured um you know listen to what what i had to say so uh, you know going back to that thing i think people just want to come together um and shout out and, and chat and talk because it is stressful i mean there is no point i mean and the thing is like for a lot of us in the ed tech community you know, if we had a euro for every time we've been told last year, I know you're very busy, but uh, and because you know that someone is at in some ways, dare I say, at the end of their tether, they're trying to do the right things for the students. When you know what's what's relatively straightforward for you and I in the community, for someone else, you know, as you, you talked about like the students didn't sign up for this. The vast majority of lecturing staff did not sign up for this either. Never expected any of this. Um, so I think you know it's 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 a bit of a chance to come together, think and, and talk and reflect and lick the wounds a little bit, but also to have a bit of crack and have a bit of fun. But uh, I think uh, you know uh, uh, absolutely, and I think just before I move on to the the, the product placement um, element of, of, of your, your your last uh, contribution there, uh, I like your Mogtown University of Bancher. That's where you got your PhD, was it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for that one. The, uh, I, might get, I might get one myself. How many mugs do I have to buy to get the PhD? Uh, at the full set of six. Okay, brilliant. Well, I have but the different, you... different six different ones, not the six same one six times. Okay, but I have that'll one... get you if you buy the same one six times, that'll get you an M fill. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that might do me. You know, I'm not, I'm not fussy as you know. Um... No, I, I know that so well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, you're absolutely right about staff having not signed up for this. But it's interesting, um, and I think one of the things we found in. Um, Number one, it done wonders for the number of staff that turned up at our training sessions. Um, so you know, I, I I would have done training sessions in the past to as few as two people, and I was probably one of those two. Um, when we started rolling out um, our staff training sessions at the start of this academic year, we were getting, um, I think, on one uh, session with 150 staff one day. Uh, turned up for 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 Zoom uh, for Zoom training, and um, they didn't come back a second time. So they must have uh, they must have picked up enough uh, to be able to uh, to be able to do to be able to do something. Um, but the number of staff I've had come to me and say that even when we go back on campus, um, there are certain elements of using the LMS or even using Zoom or even using some of the other digital tools that they're telling me that they're going to keep using. Um, yeah. because it's it's things that it's not that they didn't know they existed um, I suppose they just never had the luxury of having the time to learn them 
Um, and it's kind of, it, we all fall into the trap of, you just keep doing things the, the way you do them because that's what, that's that's what, you, what know. you know. But also I think sometimes people don't know what they don't know. Sure. So I think we've all sat, particularly those of us in the ed tech community, and you sort of in a conversation, so that, but we can't do that in an online environment. And then you kind of go, well, actually, I think you can. Like there are tools and, you know, but what about this? Well, yeah, you can. And But I'd say it goes back to the whole SAMR model. It's not just about sub substitution. It's genuine sort of, you know, making a real change, you know, and, and, and I think that's the, the real key that you're able to do. I mean, for example, you know, I, I, I've, I've lectured in, 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 in you know, rooms where, you know, I'd have nearly 200 students. I mean, how much genuine interaction, even someone as entertaining as myself, as my friend in Trinity, I, Andrew Loxley says, Tom, what you do is edutainment. But, um, but, but the thing is, I mean, at the very least, even in a big online room, I can at least do a poll. I can mm. do some sort of hands up, hands down, some sort of level of interaction in a way that I, I don't know. I think once you go above a certain number in a physical presence, I, you know, how much am I genuinely doing like that? Uh, 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 look, again, I couldn't agree more in, in that. I did see it said, and again, maybe I'm throwing out some of the kind of um, trite old lines that people say all the time, but every room in an online classroom is at the front, every seat is the front seat because there's no sitting on the back. Um, I, I, I did see an example recently of where someone was demonstrating a, uh, now this didn't happen in an issue that I work in, but I did see it demonstrated somewhere else, but somebody had like a GoPro cam on them and that's what they were streaming to their Zoom. So it meant what they were doing right in front of them. That's what their students could see. And the point that they were making was that even if I was doing this in a physical classroom, nobody could get as close as that camera got. So people were seeing things. And I guess, again, it's probably coming back to your, your SAMR model. So you've mentioned SAMR twice. Um, I'm going to ask you to elaborate slightly on it for those that may not know what it is, because it is actually one of my, 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 uh, my own personal um, favorites. Um, so first Tom for six points tell me what SAMR means okay it's an acronym so the S stands for substitution A augmentation M modification and R redefinition but I suppose the thing about it is at the, at the I, I, dare I say that the lower levels where you're just trying to get something to replicate what you're doing so going back to the thing about the proctoring you're not trying to actually do something genuinely different you're just trying to use the technology just to go back to what what you can do before there like that. Um, you know, so as I said, like the augmentation there where you're still using it as a direct response or direct sort of um, uh, substitute, but hopefully you are doing some level of improvement. Um, the modification then, I suppose, this is where I suppose I'm trying to look at here where you, you actually start to, okay, you, you take, say, something like uh, in, 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 say, a, a, an applied nursing degree, or sorry, degree like nursing there, you have something there like um, an e -part, or portfolio. Oh, hit or two now, you know, you would have talked about, oh, you know, one of the learning outcomes or one of the criteria for the nursing is that you act as, say, as a health resource. So what do you do? You, do you write in Microsoft Word? I acted as a health resort, resource, I beg your pardon. But or else then do you actually, you know, say, actually, I acted as a health resource and here is the video I made or the online uh, uh, resource that I made, you know, and you're starting to move from modification into redefinition. So you're actually really taking it. You're not just trying to replicate again, but you're genuinely offering something there. For example, you know, you, you might use PDF. Um, and I might say, well, I want to see it. Uh, how are they actually, you know, how well are they are they reading an, an, an article? I might just ask them to write a, to write some sort of summary of it. But really what I want to do is maybe to develop, you know, some sort of OER. So I'll ask students to maybe get an open access, um, Creative Commons open access, I hasten to add, um, uh, uh, 
journal paper and they'll actually say you know i want you to insert comments into it or maybe a hyperlink so you've actually made it not only are they showing me that they can critique the piece but they can actually make an oer for other students rather than just saying here's an article i want you to write an 850 word critique on it but now it's on you know so but the technology is not that fancy you you, you have the pdf technology anyway but you just you've inserted some things into it and now it just takes on a completely different you know so as i said from from substitution all the way to redefinition and anywhere along that sliding scale and that's why i keep you know like you said you're, you're a fan of it as well it's initially i think there was this kind of how can i make this like the real thing rather but i do think you know we are starting to move into the modification the augmentation and, and stuff so i think and i've been blown away with some people they have absolutely really really embraced it the whole technology yeah no no again and i couldn't agree um i couldn't agree more uh, i think sometimes um the people that i talk to on who zoom and who i agree with them too much i need to pick people that that i find disagreeable that i go to disagree with that that might be more fun um, we'll argue about something in a minute, um, but but um, but no, you, you're absolutely right. You, you also touched on on something there, and you mentioned technology, and, and um, I say this with my technology enhanced learning hat on. That whatever the last year has been about, it hasn't been about the technology. The technology has enabled us to do what we've done, um, but that's all it is. The technology is a tool; it's not an end in itself, um, and I think. That's probably been uh, the driver behind a lot of um, both staff and students alike that there possibly was that mental block when they thought this was about technology because it was kind of like, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at technology, right? But suddenly when you have to do something, when necessity, as you mentioned earlier on, is the mother of invention, you don't have the luxury of saying no anymore. Um, suddenly you push through to the other side and you realize actually, you know, the technology isn't the hard part. The, tech, the, the, the hard part actually, um, I think, is that redefinition, that modification and redefinition. It's trying, to, it's trying to take something from how we used to do it and try and imagine it differently in this post-digital world that, that we probably live on, uh, that we live in now. Going back... Um, to your speakers um, and your seven speakers, the night of um, Gas to Goes Global. Are we calling it Gas to Goes Global 2? Is that, is that what? Gas to Goes Global 2, one year on. One, two, one year on. Okay. That makes it sound like there might be Gas to Goes Global 3, two years on, but let's let's hope not. Uh, well, you know, uh, no, I, I, I do like the idea that, you know, I think the online version is, is brilliant and I would like to see it maybe but you know i i won't ask the same again i won't i, 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 I think you said i think you said that last year as well okay. so if, if i'm to just do a quick summary of the, the seven speakers from, from last year in in the order in which they spoke let's see if i can remember this so you had maha bali um yeah. spoke first from the university of cairo is that did i get that right or american think, university in american cairo? university of cairo yeah and she spoke last year a lot around um, those kind of access issues that people would have, because uh, obviously it's 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 very real um, in her part of of the world. I suppose it's very real in all of our worlds. What do you think she's going to say different this year? But um, how? Well, I, well, I think, and Tara, I'm not in the position to say, but like her her, her thing has been pedagogy of care. But I suppose the thing about it is. I'm not saying a year ago it was an abstract concept, but it's it's really real now. And I, I don't that sounds terrible that I it wasn't real a year ago, but I think we have seen seen that where, where people are really hanging on by their yeah. fingers. And uh, uh, those uh, practical yeah. things there, uh, you know. Uh, uh, absolutely. And, and I've definitely paraphrased some of what Mahabadi said last year. And I, I think several times I said. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care um, and, and, and striving at home. Your second speaker last year was um, Martin Weller, um, who, if I'm thinking back to last year, he kind of said, but sure, we've done all this, all the tools are there. We've done all this before. This isn't, there's, there's nothing new under the sun. 
Um, since then, you've also narrated a chapter in his um, 25 years of EdTech book, um, mm-hmm. which is available as a podcast as well from yeah. all the usual sources. What, what, how, how do you think the last year has been for Martin or has anything changed? Um, or has anything ever changed for Martin, I suppose, is another way of putting it. Well, I tell you, his, his, prodi- his prodigious outputs of his, of his uh, ed- ed- chat, uh, uh blog puts us all to, to shame. So every time I think I'm kind of, you know, I'm busy, I look at what Martin Weller and he's another book coming out on, on, on metaphor. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't definitely would not presume to suggest what, what that man is doing at any given given the, but I suppose the whole thing there about you know I mean with a role in the open university. Um, you know, I do sort of wonder sometimes, you know, people in the open university, is there a certain set? I'm not I'm not employing this about at Martin, but you do kind of wonder, like I'd be a little bit kind of I told you so all along. I've been telling you this for years and years and years. But I think that's what the open university might say. Uh, absolutely. And I think, actually, this is where I'm beginning to doubt myself. Was it uh, Lee Graves Wolf spoke next? Was well, she toured or fought? Well we, well, we definitely know she spoke. And, and again. Yeah. And I think uh, like the whole thing about presence. And actually, I, 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 I invited her as part of the National Forum series. And I have to say, like another plug for the, the National Forum for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning and Higher Education in Ireland. They have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, there's been series, there's often been a, a seminar once or twice a week. And it has been, you know, going back to that thing about people wanting to come together and share and leaves one on presence really, really got people thinking. And it's certainly, it's, it's, I think the whole idea of presence is something when people are exposed to it, they kind of go, well, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, it's, it's a really, is it simple, but sure, the best ideas are. So I, I think that was it. Yeah, and I, and I very much regret it not being able to make the workshop that you had with um, Lee Graves Wolf. And again, I'll, I'll echo exactly what you said um, about the forum. The the forum, the aforementioned uh, Brian Mathers, we had um, online for, for, for two virtual um, two virtual workshops um, that were fantastically well attended and really, really interesting. Uh, and a great way to spend uh, a couple of hours um, listening to, to 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 him share his knowledge. Um, yeah, I've just checked. It was Lee Graves Wolf was the, was the third speaker. So that means it was Mark um, from uh, the National Institute for Digital Learning was was fourth. Uh, Mark gave a very high intensity, high pitched, um, always yeah, uh, high pitched presentation last year about not having not pumping out the same. Um, uh, stuff from the pipe. Um, how do you think that the year has gone for him, or how do you think it's going to be different um, for, for 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 Mark this year? Well, I suppose as the professor in charge of the National, National Institute of Digital Learning in DCU, I mean, like, um, once again, I suppose sort of um, in the same sort of vein, I said about about. Um, you know, how do you help the university sort of feel? Um, I, I suppose like he's certainly promoted that whole thing about uh, online learning for a, for a long time. Um, so um, how's he feeling? You know, I mean, that's I said, these are these are good questions. And I, I think what, <laughs> yeah, I, no, say to, no, no, what, uh, what uh, I say to people is tune in and watch. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 absolutely. And I know that... Um, I, I won't. I won't go through the rest for the simple reason that it's it's probably put you a small bit on the spot. Uh, the other speakers are Frank Rennie from the University of Highlands and Islands, um, who um, distance education was pretty much invented there. By, by oh the well, that's just as I said. Yeah, no. I mean, for someone like Frank, who's living out uh, in the Outer Hebrides, literally, uh, you know, looking out onto the North Atlantic, and if ever a university was set up, uh, I mean, I'll, you know, uh, uh, for, for that sort of distance, and you know, has their time come again? Um, like Frank has, and anybody who doesn't follow Frank Granny, if you're on Twitter, you should follow Frank Granny. Uh, as I said, like he definitely is a case of sort of, I've been telling you this for years, and sort of, oh, how are you managing online? We've always been doing it online. He 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 teaches, for example, on on, on uh, an MED and uh, delivers from from uh, the north coast of of uh, uh, the Oil of Lewis and uh, the Outer Hebrides. So yeah, he's he's been doing that. Uh, another Scott then is uh, Sheila McNeil, um, you know, so 
an erstwhile, um, you know, long time advocate. And uh, and then Tony Bates. I mean, I thought it was really funny. Someone asked me about how did you manage to get someone like Tony Bates? He's huge. And I said to them, rather, rather conspiratorial. I could have said, well, if I tell you, please don't tell anybody. And he says, no, I promise. And I said, I asked. And, and, and Tom, that, that's exactly how I got you to appear on uh, Who's Zooming Who as well. That, that and the fact that ever since the first one last year, you've been given out that, uh, that I in some way hijacked you by asking you the question that I told you I was going to ask you. But anyway, we won't, we, 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 we won't get into that. We'll wrap up at that. Just to remind people again, it's Tuesday, the 13th of April, 6.30 p.m. Uh, to around about 8.00. Uh, and I did hear a rumor that there might be a um, after hours Gastagos Global Green Room um, uh, <laughs> allegedly. Um, the, 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 the website is gasta.me. Um, if you go there, you'll see last year's content at the moment, but that's uh, in the process of being um, worked up at the moment. Tom. Like it has been for all of those other nights I've spoken to you over the past year, um, it's been an absolute pleasure for, for you at any rate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm only joking. It's, 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 it was great to have you on here and uh, hopefully people will, um, get, will enjoy it. Uh, and obviously in a little, a little under a month at this stage, um, we'll get to turn up and enjoy uh, Gas to Coast Global. Yeah, four, four weeks tomorrow. Four weeks tomorrow. Excellent. Well, it depends on when people are watching this video. Well, I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping it will be tomorrow. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping it will be released tomorrow. So um, that's four weeks from the 16th of uh, March, the day before Paddy's Day. Um, so look, all that remains for me is to say, Tom, uh, thank you very, very much. Or should I say Dr. Tom Farley at Monster Technological University. Thank you very much for your time. Um, Wonderful to chat as always, um, and uh, the best of luck with the event. I'm sure we'll we'll see you um, on the night, and hopefully we'll see lots of other people there too. Thanks very much, Kev. God bless.